Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our data logging within our MoTeC M1 systems. Now, the data logging is going to allow us to capture data from our M1 and store it to a file format. This is known as onboard logging. So it's going to be utilizing logging space and memory that the M1 is going to be able to hold and we can retrieve that data information back at a later point in time. Extremely useful for track vehicles um, that you're not able to have a laptop sitting in the car as it's in racing conditions. This allows us to pull the data out, review it, and make calibrating tuning changes or evaluate how the car is performing. Now, this is going to deviate from the telemetry option, which allows us to take a look at live data and play it back within our M1 software. We'll just quickly go over the differences here. So the telemetry is something we'll be working with heavily during interfacing with our MoTeC and our software as we're plugged into the vehicle. Let me quickly demonstrate the telemetry. We can see right now the engine speed is zero, the engine is not running. Let me go ahead and fire up the engine. What we'll find is that the MoTeC is gonna to start to stream all of the data. We can also see it's already streaming here in the time plot, but it's gonna allow us to go in and play that information back and we'll just take a look at this. It's not going to be storing it to a file format that we can play back at a later point in time. It is only present as we're connected and we have everything streaming out of our MoTeC. So that's gonna be kind of the difference between the onboard logging and the telemetry is that we can't store it to file format, but it's very useful for doing any calibrating tuning within the M1. So let me go ahead and crank over the engine here real quick. So we're cranking over the engine and let's go allow the engine to fire off. And we're finding now that the engine is running and we can see everything here um, looks to be in order. So what we're finding is the engine speed's holding about 850 RPM. We see the manifold pressure here is showing about 36 uh, kPa. And we see the engine load here just registering. So all of the information starting to stream. Now, if I go ahead and click T that pauses the telemetry, which allows me to go back in here and play back what's going on or what happened at any given point. There is a finite amount that the laptop will store in terms of this collected data, and I believe it's about 20, 30 minutes or so. Then it resets itself and it starts to um, record again. In the recording option, it does not allow you to save it to a file format. Again, only for instantaneous playback and be able to review the data. Now, the nice thing about the telemetry is if you're calibrating and tuning, in the previous gold boxes, so M84, 400, 600, 800 systems, the earlier uh, MoTeC systems, you would not be able to do this. You could see the live data streaming, but you weren't able to play it back and kind of backtrack and look back to what happened in the live streaming within that older software. You'd have to log to a file, play that log back in the i2 logging software, and it was a little bit cumbersome going back and forth and making your calibrating tuning changes. The M1 greatly improves on the usability of the software having this telemetry feature. So what we can see here just real quickly is that we're able to go play it back. We can kind of backtrack here um, 20, 30 seconds. We can go in and look at any of the information, what happened. What's nice about this is that we see the positions of where we're at in the table. It shows us the highlighted position. Anywhere we put our cursor, it ties the cursor to the table positions as well as any of our channel data that we would like to take a look at. So this essentially allows us a way that we can play back captured data that's only temporarily available. Now what happens if we're in a situation where we're in racing conditions? You can't have your laptop in the vehicle in racing conditions. You, you break the laptop, it's unsafe, you can't really look at anything. So we utilize what's known as our onboard logging, and that logging allows us to store to a file format, allows us to download the information from the MoTeC, put it into a file, and then play that file back using a separate software called the i2 logging software. We're gonna be taking a look at the i2 logging software in the next tutorial, getting familiar with it and how it works. That'll make a little bit more sense. But the difference between our telemetry it is allowing us to have a data log in some sense within the software. It's only temporary. It's not stored to a file. We need to be able to store to a file and use the onboard logging for racing conditions. Now, how do we do this? It's actually relatively straightforward. Let me just go ahead and unpause that telemetry. We hit click T that allows us to start to stream the data and starts to bring the information in here. Okay, in order to start to work with our data logging, we have to understand 
what's going on in terms of our log editing. We're able to actually structure our log very specifically to suit our tastes or needs of what we wanna see for data. Now, depending on your logging package you have with your M1 box, whether it's level one, two, or three logging, level three gives you the ability to actually have up to eight subsystems for logging and giving you access through security for different people can actually access the logging within the MoTeC and see specific channels that are designated for that, that group. So let's just say race vehicle, you have your calibrator that wants to see everything, including all of the chassis data, anything within the transmission, all of that, they wanna see that. But then you have a suspension engineer working with you and they're looking at the data. You only wanna allow them to see things that are relevant for looking at suspension data. So assuming you're logging all that through the MoTeC, you're logging, let's say, shock travel, and you're logging any kind of uh, G-forces or anything associated to something that a, a suspension engineer would be interested in, in looking at, you can tie that to their tier of logging access so they're only able to see that. Level one and two logging, you're gonna find that you have just the normal logging where everything gets logged into a single log file and then you're able to go ahead and access all the information and anybody can see that information. So there is some differences here. My particular box that I'm working with, I have an M150, it does have the level three logging that was an option that was enabled with it. So I do have that ability to go into those different systems and going in and creating different subsystems for people to access. Let me just go and talk about how we set up our edit data logging option. So we're gonna go up here into this icon right here, edit data logging. And this brings me into the window that we can start to take a look at setting up for our onboard logging. So looking here at our summary, the summary is gonna tell us a bunch of information that's useful. So right now we can see in this case, I have a normal log, normal would be our system one, and then we have up to eight total systems. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.